So a couple months ago when I moved into my new place, I was setting everything up and the Lexar hub that I have for my card reader, the power cord is actually the same one that I use for my external hard drive. So I got them mixed up, just not realizing um, that they had different wattages. And when I plugged in the hard drive cable into my reader and then put a card in, the reader almost immediately started spitting out smoke. And then of course I, you know, took it out, unplugged it from my computer and then everything was fine. The computer was still running. The reader was completely fried. Thankfully the cards were still good. But once I shut down my computer and tried to boot it up, I basically kept getting this thing that was saying overcurrent status detected. We're shutting down your computer. So long story short, I had to get a new motherboard and then eventually I got the new motherboard. And then when I installed that, the computer was up and running for about a week. And then I came home one day and the computer was just off and I would try and turn it on and it would turn on for about a quarter of a second. The fans would spin up and then just die. And after a bunch of troubleshooting, I eventually realized the CPU died. So I'm going to guess that the reader somehow just messed up a bunch of stuff inside the computer and eventually killed my CPU. So after that, I basically had to decide if I was going to get a whole new CPU, which was a 6800K previously, but it was cheaper for me to get an 8700K. Actually, it was slightly more expensive for me to get an 8700K and the new motherboard, but I figured I would end up getting a bigger performance benefit and the system would last a lot longer. So the extra like $100 seemed worth it to just spend and get a newer system. So now initially when I got the system, I just followed a Hackintosher guide. Um, it was actually built specifically with my motherboard in mind. So I followed that and the system ran okay. It wasn't horrible. I wasn't having enough issues that it was really frustrating, but eventually it did start to bother me more. I was having just random reboots under heavy load. Uh, the system would freeze, but the mouse would still move freely, but the keyboard wouldn't take any input. The mouse, uh, like I said, would move around, but nothing else would happen on the system. I never did get HDMI audio or DisplayPort audio to work, or if they did, they were very intermittent and it was like one in every 10 reboots, the HDMI audio would work. And then occasionally when I was doing a Carby Cop and cloner to one of my external drives, it would just randomly eject. So a bunch of these things, I was finally like, okay, I need to figure out what's like actually going on with the system. And now I've always done my installs as Clover vanilla installs, but I've always followed a guide because I didn't really know what a lot of the Keks did or what they were for. So this time around, after talking to some people on the Hackintosh Discord from Reddit, they just said you should just go full vanilla, just follow the vanilla guide that's on the Reddit sidebar. So eventually I just decided I'm just gonna take the day and I'm just gonna do this the vanilla way and just get it over with. And it actually only took 40 minutes to get up and running. The guide honestly breaks things down like very easily. It's not that hard to understand. If you've been around Hackintosh stuff for a little bit, it's pretty easy to grasp. Even if you're new, I would definitely push you towards doing that because understanding what you're doing when you build your Hackintosh and not relying on tools like Multi-Beast or any of that to just install stuff for you, it's much better when you have an understanding of what those things are doing and where they're going so you can troubleshoot things. With Multi-Beast, it's just gonna install stuff everywhere and then you might not know which version it is or whatever. Just don't use Multi-Beast and just go to the Hackintosh Reddit and then just look at the sidebar and find the vanilla guide and just follow that. So another thing I just wanna mention about the vanilla guide really quick is with the Hackintosher guide that I followed, he was using a lot of outdated methods for audio, for the graphics, um, some ACPI flags that just were not necessary at all because of some other kecks. There was like three completely useless kecks in the folder that you didn't need. There was like three for ethernet or something like that. So that's one reason it's really good to understand what all these kecks do and stuff is you can go, that's not relevant to what I'm doing or why is this even in here to begin with? So that's another reason I would recommend starting with the vanilla guide is they strip down to the very bare basics what you're gonna need. Whereas if someone's creating a guide for you, eventually it might be outdated. That was actually one of the problems for me when I was installing uh, 10.13.4 is he didn't update things for that. He had built it for like 10.13.2 or something like that. And there was just a bunch of issues and I had to figure them out myself. If I just started with the vanilla guide, would have had all my issues solved. So again, just use that. And now since I've done that, I have never had a more stable system. Like this is 100% without a doubt, completely stable. Everything runs, iMessage, iCloud, uh, sleep, shutdown is fine, DisplayPort audio works, no random reboots. Um, the whole system runs 
absolutely flawless. So now just some general updates on the system. I do have this overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz on all cores. And before I did that, on my old system, before that CPU and motherboard kind of went out, I was using the Evo 212 CPU cooler. And when I got the 8700K, that thing could not keep this CPU cool at all. Uh, during video renders, the computer would easily hit 90 Celsius. Like it was not, it, when it was exporting, it was probably hovering between 85 and 90 Celsius. So it was really, really hot. And I was getting really worried that I was gonna burn the CPU up if I was doing that consistently. So I eventually did get the Noctua NHD 15. And since putting that in, the system has run much cooler than before um, with the 4.7 gigahertz overclock. It's now running about 70 to 80 Celsius during exports. And when it's just idling, it's like 35. And when it was idling before, it was like 45 to 50 on the Evo 212. So if you are gonna use this CPU, I would definitely recommend a better cooler than the Evo 212. There were some people online claiming that the Evo 212 was fine for cooling this CPU, but in my experience for what I'm doing with video production, that was not the case at all. And if you're gonna be doing anything like that, just get the Noctua and just save yourself a headache. Now for my previous video, I had mentioned that I had two SSDs extra in my system as backup. One one as just a backup that I did daily and then the second one was a drive that I would use to test updates and when I was actually switching over to 10.13.6 I was using that update drive just to test things to make sure everything was stable before I ported it back over to my original drive. I've actually now taken those out of my computer just to free up space because this motherboard doesn't have as many SATA ports and there's really no reason to have those extra drives in the computer at all times. It's not very often that my system goes down and I need to use it. I actually haven't had one time yet where the system has completely crashed and I needed to use one of those SSDs. So I took them out and they're just in external cases now. I bought some for like 15 bucks and I just keep them in a drawer, back them up daily. As far as video production goes on this thing, it is absolutely great. It has no problem playing my 1DX Mark II 4K files on it. Uh, edits great, exports quickly. I've really had absolutely no complaints as far as the entire system goes. I'm not one to really benchmark things. Maybe I can throw some up on screen if people are curious, but as far as render times go, they're just fine. Uh, these days I'm working with mostly 4K videos and I have no complaints. It doesn't have any problem playing things back in real time or if there's something that's you know related to After Effects, playing at half resolution really isn't much of a problem. I am also still running the 980 Ti. I know some people might ask why I'm not on a 1080 or a 1080 Ti. And the reason is I just really don't think my system needs it. It plays 4K videos back just fine. And I don't think a 1080 Ti would really help that much more for what I'm doing right now. I would love to have one, but the extra $600 that I would need to spend on it I don't think it would give me as big of a performance boost as other things might. I also added a new monitor. This is the Acer Predator X34P, I believe. Uh, it's a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. This is something I've always really wanted for video editing. Having that extra wide timeline is really nice. And then I've just got the old Dell monitor that I had on the side. Most of the time I just use this for playback while I'm editing. And then I have more screen real estate for my whole timeline over here. I absolutely love this monitor. And for gaming, it also works well. Having a hundred hertz is really nice it can overclock to 120 hertz but it didn't seem like it worked super well and 100 hertz is plenty fine definitely a big step up from the 60 hertz that i had before yeah i'm extremely happy with how the system came out at this point i would call it 100 stable it has had absolutely no issues since doing that clean install and everything runs great it definitely helps using a CPU that is natively supported by Apple, unlike the 6800K that I was using. So I'm sure compared to my old system, that definitely helps. And then also using the vanilla guide was a big boost in stability. So I hope this gives you guys some insight on how to build a more stable Hackintosh and then maybe just some ideas for system builds as well. I will leave my full specs in the description if I didn't say them in the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.